in any way our neutrality status. We want to remain a neutral, stable and peaceful country. Our intention is to join the EU on, uh, on these terms, but uh, neutrality is not being in any way challenged right now. Final question to you. It's not being challenged right now, but it could be. This is not in, in discussion right now. Right now we have a crisis that we have to manage. We have uh, people that we have to take care of. Poorest country in Europe, we have to build our economy and to help our people as well. This has to stop. This war has to stop immediately and people hopefully coming back to their houses and living their life in peace. This is what the entire world needs and wants. Dimitro Alibab there, the Moldovan MP, talking about the refugees from Ukraine that are heading towards his country. Coming up very shortly, it's difficult to piece together what is exactly taking place on the ground, but we have a military analyst who will try and do that for you, tell you where the fighting is taking place and how many troops are involved. Coming up here on Newfound. This is the BBC World Service, where Katrin Nye is investigating the glamorous company built on lies. For the past year, I've been unravelling one of the most bizarre stories I've ever come across. About the company where everything happened online, so no one ever left face to face. And none of the staff ever got paid. Everyone had done months of work. It leads you in this deep hole, in effect. They were job fished, tricked into a job at a company built on fiction. All of the work was stolen. Everything was fabricated. But why go to such elaborate lengths to create a huge web of fake personalities? Stealing identities and other people's work to try and pass the company off as real. And who behind it all? The reason I am the company because they're so real. Job fished at bbcworldservice.com slash documentaries. Coming up in, uh, in the next minute, Germany announces a historic change to its policies. It will now send arms to Ukraine. A military analyst will bring us an overview of what is actually happening on the ground. We'll hear from a lawmaker from Russia's governing party, and we'll hear from a woman whose husband has just enlisted as a doctor in the Ukrainian army. That's all on News Hour Thursday, the news. BBC News. Kiev residents are spending a third night in shelters after the Ukrainian capital survived another day of shelling and rocket fire from advancing Russian troops. These were repulsed, but the authorities warned of sabotage groups rampaging the streets. A curfew has been imposed for the whole of Sunday. Earlier, an emotional President Zelensky vowed Ukraine would never give in and appealed to Russians to persuade Vladimir Putin to halt his invasion. Satellite imagery shows Russian ground forces assembled in Novotkhovka in southern Ukraine around a hydroelectric plant in the Dnieper River. The images, released by a private U.S. company, show trucks from the Trump Dam, as well as others parked in a road. The UN Refugee Agency says more than 150,000 people are fleeing Ukraine to countries further west. The vast majority have gone to Poland. The UN chief, Antonio Guterres, has spoken to President Zelensky and promised to enhance humanitarian assistance. In a major policy shift, Chancellor Schultz says Germany will deliver weapons to Ukraine. His government is sending 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger surface-to-air missiles. Germany has also swung broadly behind proposals to cut Russia off from the global interbank payment system SWIFT. Two senior government ministers say they're trying to establish how this could be done in a way that targets the right people without causing collateral damage. An independent monitoring group says more than 3,000 Russians have been detained for holding anti-war protests since the invasion started in the early hours of Thursday. Roman Abramovich, the Russian billionaire who owns Chelsea Football Club, has handed over its stewardship to the trustees of its charitable foundation, BBC News. This is News Hour. Let's continue with our extensive coverage of the situation in Ukraine because this evening the German government, in a major shift in its policies, announced that it will deliver weapons to Ukraine. 
an issue I've been speaking to our correspondent in Berlin about is Damien McGinnis. Germany has announced that uh, it will be sending directly 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger missiles. Now that's what's going to be sent directly to Ukraine, but the other announcement was a decision to allow German manufactured arms that have been sold to other countries to also be allowed to be sent to Ukraine because until now there's been a rule that uh, any arms that Germany had sold to other European countries could not be then exported or used in a conflict zone. So we had the situation where Germany wasn't sending arms themselves and also Germany was effectively blocking other NATO allies and NATO members in some cases sending arms, arms to Ukraine. So Germany was getting a lot of criticism for this and there was a feeling that this wouldn't, this wouldn't change really because it has been part of the post-war German consensus that throwing arms into a conflict zone is never a good idea. That's, that has all changed now overnight for all. This is an historic decision by Germany to allow not only German-made arms to go into a conflict zone but also that Germany will be sending itself quite a large amount of, of, of weapons to Ukraine and it's a strong signal not only that Germany's attitudes have suddenly changed because of Russia's aggression in Ukraine but also it's a real strong signal to the Kremlin. Germany has been heavily criticised not just on this issue but also on what some perceive as opposition to imposing restrictions for Russia on the SWIFT payment system, the international payment system. Have attitudes there changed over the last few days? Suddenly, the economy minister, Robert Habeck, and the foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, both said that they are now working at high speed on a new type of sanction. They describe it as a targeted way of it restricting Russia's access 